Hi, this is Paul from Embroidery Source, and welcome to the next in our series of um, how-to videos uh, for Wilcom software. Today, we're going to talk about how to use the uh, automatic kerning function in Wilcom um, to set the spacing of the characters in a particular font so that you don't have to keep adjusting the spacing every time you use the font. Now, the spacing is what's referred to as kerning. And in this case, I've chosen the word avatar because it demonstrates this spacing problem very, very clearly. If you look here, the A and the R, the spacing is pretty much acceptable, but all of the other letters look terrible because the gap appears to be huge. Now, in fact, it's not really what it appears to be. If I use the guidelines by clicking and dragging from the top ruler, and I run that vertical line down between the, the A and the V, you can see the actual gap between the bottom of the A and the top of the V is no bigger than the gap between the A and the R. However, because the two columns run in the same direction, we see a large gap between the columns, which looks terrible. Now, what can we do? The first thing we do is um, we select the font and we move over to the right hand side of the screen here. And you can see that the font I've chosen is Castle. And if I scroll further down towards the bottom, right down at the bottom, you can see two options here, auto letter spacing and auto kerning. Now, auto kerning is the one that I'm interested in. And you can see that the, the, the option is grayed out. This means that the castle font doesn't have a kerning table. It means that any uh, adjustments that are going to be made, you have to do them manually or you have to find a similar font and copy the kerning table from a similar font across. So what I'm going to show you first is how we can manually adjust the spacing of the letters and save those changes so that the next time you use this font, the spacing will be perfect. Now it's very easy to do. All we do is go to the reshape tool. And now I simply move my letters so that the gap appears to be the same between each of the letters. So moving across here. OK, now let me click away. How does that look? OK, um, perhaps the AVA might be a tiny bit too close. So I'll move them away a little bit. OK. Yep, I think I'm, I think I'm happy with that. So now what we do, we select all of those letters. And to do that, I can simply drag a box around each of the pink diamonds in the middle of the letters. And that selects them all at the same time. And now I go up to the object menu. And I select update kerning settings. Now that's now saved those spacings for A followed by V, V followed by A, A followed by T, T by A, and A by R. So the way I can best demonstrate that now, and you'll notice that having updated the kerning table, the auto kerning option is now activated. It's not grayed out any longer. So now, how can I demonstrate that? Let's delete the lettering, and I'm going to recreate it again now. So back in here, and I type the letters A, V, A, T, A, R, create the text, click on screen, and there it is. Now also, uh, by the way, <laughs> I do have to change from the font Madoni back to Castle again. So let me just scroll down a little bit. There's Castle. And now I'm back to the same font Castle. And you can see my letter spacing is perfect this time. So the secret there, as is always the case with Wilcom or any other software you might use, don't repeatedly perform actions if there's any way to automate it. And updating the kerning table is a perfect example of how you can automate a repetitive job in Wilcom so you never have to do it again. Thanks for watching. Um, the second in our series of Wilcom how-to videos.